Israel struck Gaza on Monday and witnesses reported blasts in the besieged territory's south, but fighting had largely subsided on the second day of an army declared quote-unquote pause to facilitate aid flows. The relative calm came as Israel's Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu dissolved his war cabinet, reflecting the country's political fractures. David Menzer, spokesman for the Prime Minister's office, said the body had been disbanded following the resignation of centrist leader Benny Gantz, who had required a war cabinet's formation in order to join a unity government. A U.S. special envoy visited Jerusalem on Monday, seeking to calm the situation on the disputed northern border with Lebanon and Israel. Reuters correspondent Alex Cohen has more. Israel said tensions with the Iran-backed Hezbollah militia could lead to a larger conflict. Here's Israeli Army spokesperson Rear Admiral Daniel Hagari. Hezbollah is jeopardizing the future of Lebanon so that it can be a shield for Hamas. U.S. Special Envoy Amos Hochstein's visit follows weeks of increasing exchanges of fire along the line between Israel and Lebanon, where Israeli forces have for months been engaged in a simmering conflict with Hezbollah that has continued alongside the war in Gaza. Reuters correspondent Alex Cohen, Hamas is a U.S. designated terrorist group. The United States is concerned the espionage trial of detained Wall Street Journal reporter Evan Gershkovich to deny charges of collecting secrets for the U.S. CIA will be held behind closed doors, U.S. State Department spokesperson Matthew Miller said on Monday. We will try to attend the trial as we try to attend the trial of uh, any American citizens who are detained in Russia. This is VOA News. Russian President Vladimir Putin will travel to North Korea on Tuesday in a rare visit that may see Moscow sign a quote-unquote strategic partnership treaty with Pyongyang, the Kremlin said. The historic trip, which the Kremlin called a friendly state visit, comes as Putin seeks ammunition for his military offensive in Ukraine and the West suspects Pyongyang of sending weapons to Moscow. A Kremlin aide said several documents will be signed, among will be important, highly significant documents. The U.S. Surgeon General has called on Congress to require warning labels on social media platforms similar to those mandatory on cigarette boxes, AP correspondent Julie Walker reports. In a Monday opinion piece for the New York Times, Dr. Vivek Murthy says that social media is a contributing factor in the mental health crisis among young people. Murthy says the use of just a warning label wouldn't make social media safe for young people, but would be a part of the steps needed. He says a Surgeon General's warning label, which requires congressional action, would regularly remind parents and adolescents that social media has not been proved safe. I'm Julie Walker. Campaigning kicked off on Monday for France's snap parliamentary election, a day after the National Rally Party's anti-immigration policies may have been the target of words by French footballer Kylian Mbappe. Reuters correspondent Olivia Zolino has more. Liana Agoon, the 22-year-old care worker, says she and Mbappe both share the same concern the rise of extremism. During a press conference on the eve of France's opening game at Euro 2024, France's team captain made a call to young voters. Uh, on voit très bien que les... Agoon says that message hit home. I agree with everything he says. I have a similar opinion and I think it's important to go and vote, especially now and for the future generations. Mbappe said he supported the same values and position as his teammate. Marcus Taram, who has clearly called for voters to ensure that the far-right national rally, quote, does not pass. Reuters correspondent Olivia Zolino, an own goal was enough to give France a winning start to their Euro 2024 campaign on Monday as they edged Austria 1-0 in their opening game, but Kylian Mbappe came off late with a bloodied nose. A diverted Mbappe cut back seven minutes before halftime in Dusseldorf allowed the French, one of the leading contenders to win the tournament, to come through a stiff test.
Thank you for watching. Can you do me a favor? Please leave a comment in the comment section below. That would really help. Thank you and see you again soon.